So welcome to today's lesson on numerical analysis. I'm Guido Canrindo, a third year student of mathematics, KNST, and I'm going to take you through this lesson. But please subscribe to the YouTube channel and please like the videos if they help you. So the inverse power method is conceptually the same as the power method, except that for the inverse power method, it is used to find the smallest eigenvalue. Remember, the power method was used to find the dominant eigenvalue. So, note, it uses the same algorithm as the power method, except that instead of using the matrix A directly, we use the inverse of A. That's for the inverse power method. So, you remember that for the power method, we're using our matrix A, but for the inverse power method, we use the inverse of A. And the power method finds the in terms of magnitude the largest of the eigenvalues which is the dominant eigenvalue and the inverse power method here finds the opposite that's the smallest in terms of magnitude so it is the same algorithm as the power method except that we place the a with a inverse so we're not going to go through any algorithm since we've already treated it so straightforward we are going to solve an example an example says we should do four iterations with the inverse power method to find the approximate smallest eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector. So this A here is our matrix, which is supposed to find um, the smallest eigenvalue of it and its corresponding eigenvector. So the solution, when you solve this using um, direct method, then you are going to get the exact solution. So your lambda 1 will be negative 1. And your lambda 2 is going to be negative 2. So in terms of magnitude, you realize that your lambda 2, the magnitude of it is 2. That's of lambda 1 is 1. And of course, we know 2 is greater than 1. So meaning that this 2 is the largest or it's larger than this. So it's the largest of all our eigenvalue and this here is the smallest. So when you're using the power method, it will find this for you since this is the dominant eigenvalue. But if you're using the inverse power method, it will find this for you since this is the smallest of it. So if you know the corresponding argin vector to our lambda 1 equals negative 1, which is um, the smallest argin value is this particular vector that we have here. I hope you get it. So that's the direct method. Let's start with our iterative process. So we have our A matrix here, but we have to find for A inverse because instead of using A, we use A inverse. So when you find the inverse of our matrix A, going through the procedure, we are going to end up with this particular um, matrix here, which is going to be the inverse of A. But remember after that, then we do our iteration. And for iteration, we always see we choose a certain S0, that's our initial again vector, such that the infinity norm of our X0 is 1. That means the largest value inside is 1. And after that, for our first iteration, our X1 will be equal to A inverse X0. Then our X2 will be equal to A inverse X1. And it continues to we get Xn will be equal to A inverse Xn minus 1. So that is with the algorithm for the inverse power method. So simple. So with our first iteration, we first choose an initial argument vector S0 such that the infinity norm of it is 1. So we chose this particular vector here to be our S0. That's 1, 1. So you realize that 1 is the largest element you can find. The infinity norm is 1. So our x1 for the first iteration, we put A inverse X0, where this is our a inverse this are uh, x naught and this becomes our uh, x1 so always we do a scaling and the scaling we do is that we always make sure whatever is here is one and this is because mostly whatever is here happens to be our free coordinate and you know we mostly choose our free coordinate to be zero or one but in most cases one because when we choose it to be zero we are going to get a trivial solution so we make sure we scale this place to one so the only way to do that is to uh, multiply it by one over 0 0.5 so that means this particular vector here becomes our approximate um, eigenvalue 
after the first iteration. We move on to the second iteration. So with the second iteration, we have S2 is equal to A inverse X1. This is our A inverse S1. We get this. We scale whatever is here to 1. So this is the only way to do that. And this here becomes our approximated eigenvalue, sorry, eigenvector after the second iteration. I think I mean it. What is here is also the eigenvector. I think I said otherwise. Sorry. So we do our third iteration, and with our third iteration, we have x3 equals a inverse x2. So this is our a inverse, this is our x2 as we computed from here, and we get this. We have to make sure we scale this to also 1, and this is how to do it. So that means whatever we have here becomes the approximated eigenvector after the first third iteration. Sorry. And our x4, that's the last iteration because we're asked to do just one iteration. So we go to this, this, we get this. You have to make sure we scale this place to 1. So this is how to do it. So that means that after our fourth iteration, this here becomes the approximated target vector. So hence, after the fourth iteration, the approximated target vector. So this is supposed to be vector. So the approximated target vector for the smallest argument value is x or v equals 4.101 and remember that the exact solution for it was 1 so you could see it is very close if we had done more iterations we would have gotten something very close to 4 so we then use the Rayleigh quotient to find the smallest argument value or the argument value which gives us this particular argument vector here so the formula is Lambda equals A inverse X dot X, then X dot X, where our A inverse is the inverse of A, and our X is the approximated argon vector. So A inverse times X will give us this particular vector here, and the dot product of A inverse X dot X will give us negative 18.75. Then the dot product of X and itself will give us 17.81. So putting it into the Rayleigh quotient formula, we get half this, which gives us negative 1.05. So you remember that the exact was our lambda one was negative one, then our corresponding margin vector was 41. And with the approximation, we are getting negative 0. Point, negative 1.05 and 4.101. So you could see that doing our iterations we're able to get something very close to the exact and the truth is that if we had done more iterations then we have gotten something which would have been very very close to the exact so thank you very much this is the inverse power method please don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel and please like the videos if they help you thank you